talk a little bit about like sort of this idea of secondary interviews. Now, the homework that I gave you guys for today is I want you guys to start building a list of pieces of content that are inspiring to you. These are people speaking in maybe a TEDx talk, or these could be people that are speaking in you know, a, a podcast interview or something like that. I want you to be going out to gather about 10 to 20 pieces of content that inspire you. Because what we're gonna start doing next week is we're gonna actually turn these into what's called a secondary interview. Now, there's two types of interviews that most of you will do, and we'll talk more about secondary interviews next week. The first type is what we sort of described already, this idea of a primary interview. Now, a primary interview is if Laura and I sit down and we interview you. If I interview and ask her questions, I'm basically capturing, I'm gonna pull up my phone and record the interview in that way, and so that's how I'm sort of capturing our conversation. Now, what have I done there? I've actually captured her words by me asking, right? So that's kind of one type of interview. The second type of interview is what's called a secondary interview. Now remember what I've asked you to go do, is I want you to go out and I want you to gather podcast interviews and I want you to gather TEDx talks. What are you going to be listening to in those interviews? Stories. Well, what are you listening to them? It's close. Yeah, I mean, yes you are. But what are you listening for? What are you listening to when they're talking? Their voice, all right? You're listening to their voice. So just as if Laura, and I'm asking her questions and she's giving her her voice, when you listen to people speaking in other forums, other times they've been interviewed, places they've put stuff together, you're doing the same thing. It's called a secondary interview. Now, secondary interviews are a powerful tool for us to be able to gather content even if we haven't spoken from someone. Now, the way that we'll be able to do that one is you'll listen to it, you'll gather it, and then you'll make sure you properly cite it in your book. So you will find that about probably 40% of your stories will be driven by this concept of what we call secondary interviews. You know, it may be difficult for you to get Oprah Winfrey to do an interview with you. She's busy, right? But Oprah Winfrey has talked a lot and she's had it recorded a lot of places. So if you're able to piece together some of those dialogues and conversations she's had, again, just like gathering her words directly, gathering them from other places, you can turn them into really powerful stories. And so a secondary story, a secondary interview is just based on a different type of research. Right? Again, it's not like going out and sort of capturing you know, sort of articles and journal articles and things like that. It's gathering their voice in a different format. And so the difference between sort of what we call research and secondary interviews is this. When you typically do research, again, think of the research that you would do for a class. Typically, you're going to be researching around a topic. You're going for these lessons. You're looking for facts and data. And again, the research is like Wikipedia style things or books and journals. That's what we call research. Secondary interviews are different. They're driven around this person. And again, I use Oprah Winfrey. So if you want to include insights from Oprah Winfrey, you need to understand her, not just like her background and things like that, but you want to understand the stories. You want to hear the stories that she's told other places. You want to listen to her quotes. And most importantly, you want to find them in different places on YouTube, podcast interviews, maybe profile pieces that she's written or individual blogs. So one of the key things as you're this next week or so starting to build up this list of sort of people that inspire you that might happen, we're gonna to start to think about how we're gonna turn that into an interview. And again, these are the places that I want you hunting. So as you're looking over the next week, I want you to find people that inspire you that you think, gosh, it would be amazing to interview Oprah Winfrey. It would be amazing to interview Brene Brown. It would be awesome to interview sort of Bono from U2. Like whoever they are, remember that they may be tough for you to get. You may be able to get them, like you certainly might. But if you think their stories are important, they could help teach you, I want you to start to find where they're already talking. So that it's simulating an interview by gathering where they've already been interviewed in those places. Again, the goal of this one is to find places and sources where it's in their own words, right? In their own words. And again, it's it's interesting because what you're really doing is you're simulating as if you sat down and spoke to them, you're just gonna be able to pull it. Now again, the question I always get from people is like, well, but can I actually use that in my book? You're damn right you can, right? Like, again, as long as you properly cite where you got it from, it's perfect, it's great. One of my favorite stories in the book that I have coming out this fall is a story from Hassan Minaj, and I'll actually use this example throughout. Now, I've never been able to interview Hassan Minaj. However, I have emailed with him before. I have not been able to get him to do an interview. However, I've been able to tell a super powerful story that I love based on places from a blog interview that he did, an interview that he did with Gary Vaynerchuk on a podcast, and actually sort of his own YouTube channel. Based on those sources, I was able to simulate a story that I was able to tell based on his own words. So again, a good secondary interview by doing this sort of research, which we'll talk more about next week, is you'll come up with a group of quotes, you'll come up with a group of stories, and most importantly, you'll be able to tell a really good story 
even if you had an interview. In fact, it's almost probably easier to do a secondary interview on someone than it is to do a primary interview and get good stories because you have a much better depth. So I'll quickly go through this one. We're gonna do this next week live in class, but I want you to show you to start to look for these sorts of things as we go. So once you sort of identify a person, someone that you sort of find some content in from a blog or a TED talk or whatever it is, this is how you start to go deeper. So let's just say here, for example, you find this person, Sheryl Sandberg or Richard Branson is an example, people who you would like to interview for your book. If you also may say like, hey, I, someone who's not so famous, but they're from a right organization, maybe for your book it would be really powerful to have someone from Xerox or the Washington Post or New York Times um, to find those things. Again, you could find someone who's either a person, a specific person, or someone who's notable for where they're at in those ways. Again, the key thing to do is start to create that list and go through it. So how do you interview them? How do you actually go forth and do it from this person? The first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna start to Google them, just like we always do, right? Like, this is how you cyber stalk anyone. You're gonna Google them and start to look for the first couple pages, see what you can identify. See if you can find them on their social media, find profiles about them, find things that you can do. Again, if they're super famous, like again, Interviewing Oprah Winfrey in this way is like not going to be that fun, right? You could find thousands and thousands of pages. So you may have to wind up customizing a little bit. So you might want to do Oprah Winfrey plus entrepreneurship, right? Or whatever it is to find someone like that. So again, you're just going to Google them and find what you can do. Go to the first couple pages and see what you can observe a little bit. I'm going to show you a quick example along the way of this woman named Lauren Coons, who I did this with to kind of give you an example. So I've never met Lauren, um, but she's an entrepreneur, someone who I think is really great. So these are some examples. When I Googled her, these were some of the sites that I found. And again, I'm just giving you this to start to look at it. We're going to go through this in more detail next week, but I found some sites about her. Then I went and sort of mapped her career. I kind of went through LinkedIn and Wikipedia and figured out how does her career go? Where was she born? Where did she grow up? Where did she study in college? Where did she work? Trying to be able to map that thing. Again, sort of give myself an idea of how she got to where she was. And again, started to put together a little bit of a timeline about her biography. From there, then I'm gonna look for things in her own words. I'm gonna look for talks that she's given on YouTube, find quotes that she had, places where I can start to gather this information. Again, you may start here and pull yourselves out or you may start the other way around, but how do you find someone in this way? Again, look for those sorts of things there and the best thing you can do is find if there's a transcript of it. So you might not have to listen to the whole thing and record it. We'll talk more about some tools to do these ones, but again, look for those transcripts. So again, here's some examples from an interview that I saw about Lauren that I thought were really interesting. These are some quotes that I had that I thought could be used in this article. From there, see if they have a blog. Do they have a blog out there? Do they have these sorts of things that might be interesting to you? Find if there's interesting articles or quotes that they've given that they've written that also you can use in that way. Here's some examples from some of the things that she's written about kind of, she's a chatbot expert, some of the things she's written, some quotes that I've been able to pull out from that one. From there, look at their social media. See, what do they say on social media? What do they said on Twitter? What do they said on Facebook, Instagram? Look for things that they've written and said that might help you in that regard. Here's a couple of tweets that she'd given that were really powerful and helpful for me to be able to understand. Then, and perhaps the most important thing is, as you're doing this research, remember, like, this is all kind of background stuff, the real thing we want to do is, do we find a story? So you want to be looking and saying, like, is there a story in there? Is there something that's interesting? Because again, just giving Oprah Winfrey's background isn't that interesting. Instead, is there a story? In fact, there is a story, and we want to find something in this one that I'll show you. You want to look for that thing that has that date, location, and dialogue. So for Lauren, and I'm actually going to read this one because I think it's a really good quote, this is a story that she told that was out there. So, so, senior year, Michael Peach from Little Brown, who published copy of his book, came in and gave a talk in front of all the English majors. It was supposed to be for people who were potentially interested in going into the publishing industry. I think half the people there were trying to figure out how they could get published themselves. Someone asked if he accepted unsolicited manuscripts, and he said no, but if someone gets a hold of my personal email address and sends me a very interesting letter, I'll read it. So, after the talk, I went up to him and said, I'm going to need your personal email address because I'm going to send you a very interesting letter. I think he was surprised, but he gave it to me. Now, what are the elements in there? You see, there's the date, right? Senior year, she begins that one. There's a location, in my English class, right? And there's dialogue, the dialogue from her, the dialogue from him, right? That's the things you're looking for as you're going from it. So again, as you're going out and starting to gather over this week, again, I want you to find those sorts of places. Remember, sort of one of our kind of big milestones here, our sort of, of our three big assignments, is all of you are going to do 10 secondary interviews. You're gonna do a complete interview just like this. I'll show you the templates, but as you're going out this week, I want you to find these. Again, you may decide to do more of these, but we're gonna turn in at least 10 of them that we'll oftentimes use in our book. Again, a good secondary interview by doing this sort of research will help you gain six to 10 quotes and one to two interesting stories that you might use, all right? So that's what we'll do next week a little bit um, in those regards. So 
We'll do this one. All right, so here's the goal of speaking. What I want you to start to do this week is I want you to kind of have those friendly interviews, and I want you to start to sort of lightly do some secondary interviews. I want you to find four people from this list of people you have and start to lightly go through and cyberstalk them, right? I want you to start to look around a little bit. Next week, I want you to come back. We're going to kind of go through this in detail, but find a little bit more detail about these people and places. All right, we're going to then see, like, what these interviews that we do, they lead us to stories. They take us to places that can get us to say yes in those ways. Next week, we'll start to talk more about how we go to the interviewing process. But this week, I want you to be listening and looking for stories. Find when you're out there, what is the story, what is background information as we're going along the way.